Why am I single? Oh, not me. You. Why are you single? Have you been searching for commitment from the opposite sex or from same sex, however you go or however you roll? And for some strange reason, it's been heartbreak after heartbreak and you keep asking yourself, why? Why? I am ready. I am ready to be committed to somebody, but for some strange reason, I'm still single. I'm not finding the right people. Why? Well, in this video, we just might answer the question as to why you are still single. If you're interested in this topic, why don't you think about going down and smashing the subscribe button because we drop this type of content every Thursday. And I'll be back with more. You know the way I do it when I drop lyrical. Anytime I spit lyrical, philosophical. All the niggas mimical, but they stare still. On ticket literal, punch lines go lateral. Snag them on that Hello YouTube. Hello Chronics. How are you all doing today? So, have you always asked yourself the question, why am I single? Why? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. What is wrong with men? What is wrong with women? Why are they not seeing me? What is going on? Why do I keep hooking up with the wrong people? Yes, I know. There are people who are not interested in getting committed to someone else, the people who don't want to get in a relationship with you. So this video is not for those kind of people. They're not into relationships and they don't want to get hitched or get hooked up with anybody. But there are the people who really are hungry. They're yearning to get hooked up. They're yearning to meet the right person. But for some strange reason, it's just not working for them. Some people might have been in a very long relationship and just got out of this relationship for some strange reason it never worked out maybe the chemistry was wrong the balance was wrong they were not compatible with the other person and they've just been asking themselves what is going on i keep hooking up with the wrong person what is happening now this video was for people who are 30 and above or people who are mentally stable in their 20s. Guys, I want y'all to stick with me, okay? I want y'all to stick with me. Watch this video to the very end. I promise you at the end of this episode, you would be able to know why you are still single and how you can go about fixing it. Now we're going to attempt to answer the question as to why you are still single by using unconventional means to find the reason why this is so. Do you know that we hold more power over our romantic destiny than we give ourselves credit for? Let's think about it. Just hold on, give me one second. Just think about it for a minute. You make the world you live in. You choose the circumstances. You decide where you want to go. You decide where you want to work. If you don't like the company you work for, you could decide to quit. You could decide where you want to have lunch. You could decide to go see a movie. What movie you want to see? So you hold more power than you think. The problem is people do not focus on what they can control. Most people are lost in things that they cannot control. For example, it's raining outside. Why is it raining outside? Dude, you can't control whether it rains or not. Oh, it's snowing. Why? You can't control this stuff. You can't control the elements. You can control how you respond to this though. For example, you know that from certain periods of time in the year to the next period of time it's going to be winter so you can get ready for the winter season by buying a jacket now this is you focusing on things you can control as opposed to things you cannot control okay so in this video we're going to try to wrestle back the control of your romantic life and give you control make you aware and conscious of things that you are doing right now that is keeping you away from finding the right person. So if you're conscious about this, you can stop doing them and start doing something else. What I'm trying to say is, or learn the habits that have been keeping you from where you wanna be and learn new habits is gonna get you to where you wanna be or get you to meet the person you actually wanna be with. Now, let's start from number one, defenses. Everything starts from defenses. Now, what is your defense? Now, what do I mean by defenses? 
What is that excuse that you've been giving to yourself? Usually, our defenses don't start from when we're grown. Our defenses, meaning the excuses we give ourselves why we are always hooking up with the wrong people, actually started way back, maybe when we were still children, when we're still being formed in our adolescent stage. Maybe you grew up in a household where you had parents who were not loving enough. Maybe you grew up in a household where parents were too loving. Okay, so if you grew up in a household where parents were not loving enough, then obviously you're going to grow up maybe a little bit too independent. So when you meet a man who is too loving, somehow it, you become very suspicious of this person. You start to ask yourself, why is this person too loving? Why is this person why is he so in need of emotional attachment? Oh, well, honey, I miss you. Why didn't you call me yesterday? Oh, I was thinking about you. Like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Because deep down, you are not used to this kind of stuff. You're not used to that show of emotions or that show of affection from a father figure, from your mother, from your father, from the caregiver that looked after you when you were growing up. So when you grow up, you tend to look for your parents in your relationship. You tend to go into relationships with partners that are always emotionally distant. People who are not emotionally available to you. Suddenly you're looking for someone that's like your father, someone that's like your mother, because deep down, this is what you've always been used to. And the other way is the same, okay? So if you were showered with too much affection when you were young, you grow up looking for relationships where people are going to be showering you with emotions every second, every minute. That phone call, honey, how are you doing? Oh my God, honey, how was your day? Oh honey, I miss you. So you're gonna be looking out for this outward showering of emotions. And that is not a bad thing in itself, but it's not also practical. Everybody has something going on in his life, okay? So people might be facing different things. And of course you might wanna say, but it's in a relationship, we could share whatever it is you're facing. But sometimes different people handle different things that happen in the world or in their life differently. So someone could be a good partner, but might not be someone who is always, always outwardly showering emotions on his other partner. So a guy might be a person who does not always shower his emotions on the girl, but he still loves her. Or a girl might be the kind of person who doesn't always shower emotions on the guy, but she still loves him. So in, in the end, if there's no balance between outward show of emotions and restraint, sometimes it could lead to a state of emotional or relationship incompatibility number two unhealthy attractions now remember in number one we said due to the defenses people grew up having talking about issues that you had when you were growing up topics that were not discussed or you felt insecure about discussing in your circle of friends with your family and stuff so you grew up kind of shielding yourself around this concept, around this topic, around these norms, and around these habits. So when you meet people who are trying to compensate for this insecurity that you feel, maybe it's a lack of emotion that was not showered in you when you were a child, and you meet someone who is looking to shower you all the attention and emotion, and you become suspicious of this person. Oh my God, who is this person? This is too much. Why is he so needy? Why does he always want to show emotions or affection towards me? I don't like in you trying to avoid this type of person, you always run to the other category of people, like I said before, who are emotionally distant. Do you get it? So it leads to you forming unhealthy relationship with people that you think you need. In your mind, you think, oh, I, I, I've always grown up like this. I, I'm, I'm not an emotional person. I don't need people to show me that they love me. I don't need people to give me gifts or shower me with love. And so you've lied to yourself over time that you don't want this. So you go to meet people who don't do this to you. What does it mean if someone says, I know he loves me. He's never told me he loves me before, but I know he loves me. How do you know? Do you get it? If I love you, I have to tell you, oh babes, I love you so much. Do you get it? If I'm emotionally very distant and I don't tell you I love you, 
but you resume I love you maybe because I take you out I buy you good stuff I buy you clothes I buy you gifts and I'm always there for you and you just assume I love you it's not the same as saying it expressing it so in trying to avoid meeting or hooking up with people or being in a relationship with people who shower you with love you tend to get into relationships which are unhealthy with people who don't have your time with people who are emotionally distant the fact that you grew up in a family where there was maybe your parents were not available and because they were not available it was very hard for there to be that outward expression of love to you most people who grew up in this environment lack or fear intimacy so there's this fear of intimacy girl i really love you i will right from the very first day i saw you there was something about you that really attracted me i really really want to be with you i want to shower you with that love and that care and when you hear stuff like this you you just something in your head just snaps like no 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 this is too much what what are you doing there's this fear of intimacy due to whatever you might have gone through when you're younger so that defensive wall is built up and because of the fear of intimacy there's this fear of leaving your comfort zone and taking a risk on this person looking to see if this relationship might yield something fruitful might yield something beautiful so the fear of being intimate with someone of letting yourself go also leads to unhealthy attraction and unhealthy relationship with someone that you think might be the right person but in the long run he might be or she might be the wrong person for you the fear of intimacy number three now I touched about the fear of intimacy a little bit in number two the fear of intimacy is number three now ever since we're all way young I'm talking about boys and girls we've always had this fantasy we've always had this fantasy of what it would be like when we eventually fall in love get committed to somebody find that person who is gonna sweep up off our feet and shower us with that affection that love that care but this is very very this is tricky some people are lost in this fantasy and when it comes to reality they do not want a real experience to disrupt that survival mechanism that they've lived off of for such a long time so when it comes to going out there putting yourself out there looking for the right man looking for the right woman they don't want reality to mess up with that survival mechanism that has been keeping them going I'm talking about mentally this far when people start thinking about oh I want to meet this girl oh I want to meet this guy oh look at this cute guy oh look at this beautiful girl maybe we could start something together somehow they don't want to disrupt this survival mechanism this whole fantasy that they've always had from when they were younger maybe when they were teenagers maybe when they were even younger than that they do not want this survival mechanism to be broken this fear of intimacy keeps people from going out of their comfort zone and finding the right people that they want to build a relationship with sometimes because of the fear of going outside your comfort zone to find the right person people get very critical about people they meet so you start to hear stuff like oh he's too tall oh he's too short oh mm, he talks kind of funny so you start to get lots of excuses you start to see people coming up with reasons why the relationship wouldn't work You're coming out with things that are outlandish just so that they stay in their comfort zone just so that they don't commit to a relationship commit to this new person this fear of intimacy holds them back another way that you could know that you're being held back by fear of intimacy is when you meet a guy who you think likes you or you meet a girl who you think likes you and any small gesture to you is too much just something small it could just be a gift it could be a wristwatch it could be a shirt it could be a jacket it could be a pair of shoes just any show of affection and you start to think it just triggers off something in your mind it's too much well what's she doing this for what's he doing that for we just met yesterday we just met two weeks ago it's too much this 
is a sign that you are actually suffering from a fear of intimacy. Number four, pickiness, being picky. Usually being picky works hand in hand with being defensive. That defensive wall you've already built for yourself psychologically over time, maybe as a result of bad experiences you've had from your childhood, or maybe you've had a boyfriend or a partner that has been very dishonest, deceitful, bad experiences in your previous relationship. It makes you very picky. When you meet someone who you think likes you or who is trying to show or prove to you that he likes you and he wants to take this further, you start to think, oh, this, 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 this happened the last time. Did, uh, Johnny did this to me. Um, Tina was like this. It, it happened. So you start to get very picky. You get to a room and someone says something and you want to avoid this person. You get very critical about this person and you end up picking the wrong person because when you start to assume that this person has cruel intentions or this person is not being genuine or this person is not the right person for you, you're trying to select, cherry pick the right people, you end up picking the wrong person due to obviously from past experiences you tend to build up this defenses or you tend to build up this defensive wall that but the person who's trying to prove himself to you might find it very very hard to break down and people can only try as hard as they can or people can only try so much eventually the guy who is genuine and trying to prove to you that he's genuine and he really wants to be in a relationship with you might end up moving elsewhere to find love number five low self-esteem number five low self-esteem now many people want to find love many people want to find love but have very low self-esteem and feel that they're not worthy to be in a good healthy relationship many people might think that maybe they're too fat or maybe because of something that has happened in your past maybe something your parents might have done or might have said makes them feel unworthy for relationships so they go into a room crowded with people maybe a man goes into a room crowded with beautiful women maybe in a company retreat or maybe a church or maybe in a cinema or in a shopping mall and you see a beautiful lady looking at you and you look away you can't even maintain eye contact and you keep telling yourself why is she looking at me? I'm very ugly or I'm very fat. I'm too tall. I'm too short. I'm too dark. I'm too fair. There's always a reason for you not to maintain eye contact or for you to break out of your comfort zone and go out and express yourself or meet this person. You're suffering from the case of low self-esteem. Now, this is one of the reasons why you might not be finding the love or being in the relationship that you need to be. Number six. Number six is fear of competition. Now let's face it guys, every relationship or the quest to get into every relationship is competition. You're not the only person who is looking at this girl. There's someone else looking at this girl. Now the fact that there are two guys looking at a girl or two girls looking at a guy means there's fair competition. And it's what makes a quest to get in a relationship or a quest to meet a girl or a quest to meet a guy more fun. The fact that you're trying to woo this girl away from all the praying eyes or the fact that you're trying to woo this guy away from all the praying eyes. But number five works hand in hand with number six. So a low self-esteem makes you think that you're not worthy to compete for this girl. In fact, it's very bad for some people. Some people step backwards or some people take a backward step. Maybe a friend of yours just declares his interest. Oh, I like this girl. As soon as you hear, I like this girl, they just take a step back. The low self-esteem is eating deep into the psyche, it is eating deep into the subconscious that they just feel that you're not worthy to compete with this guy for this girl. Now, this is a very, very strong reason why you are not in the right relationship, why you have not found love. Number seven. Number seven is isolation and routine. Now, 
In the 21st century, due to women emancipation and gender equality and women rights movement and all that kind of stuff, it's given birth to an era where the very super successful women, where women walk toe to toe competing with men, being successful in fields and industries that were otherwise male dominated. With this newfound success comes wealth, comes affluence, comes influence, and with that comes the need for you to stay stuck in your ways. It comes with this need for you to stay with the familiar. You come back from work every night and suddenly you're like, ah, I've accomplished great stuff today. It's been a successful day. I don't need to go out to socialize. I don't need to go out to a nightclub. I don't need to eat out in a restaurant. I'm just going to cozy up with my duvet and catch up on my favorite TV show. Now, with you stuck in this routine, you could get isolated from the outside world. And isolation is a very bad thing, guys is a very very bad thing because with you getting isolated obviously it's gonna mean meeting fewer and fewer people meeting fewer and fewer people means you're gonna be stuck in your ways you're gonna be lonely and our mind plays a trick when it comes to this particular point now your mind tells you oh what are you going out for you've been working so hard you're tired you're stressed out why don't you just cozy out in front of the fireplace wrap around your duvet watch TV play computer games Play video games, cook your favorite meal, maybe pop a bottle of your favorite wine. But you need to understand your mind is still going to act against you when you start to get older or when you start to realize that, wow, am I not in love? Your mind is still going to come back to you and tell you, loser, when you were supposed to be out there looking, meeting people and socializing, maybe meeting the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams, you were drinking wine and stuff. So. It's, it's very dicey at this point, being isolated and stuck in a particular routine. You need to check yourself. This just might be the reason why you haven't found love yet. Number eight. Now, number eight is my personal favorite. Number eight is rule making. Now, even in the world of business, it's very easy for us to keep records. So you go through a business day and things worked out for you. So you, you write it down your diary or you, pre you prepare a memoir or oh, things worked out very bad for you. You write it down. So it worked out well, it worked out bad. You write it all down. Most people do this also in a relationship setting. So you were in a toxic relationship. You just, you get a rule book, you write it down. Never go out with Nigerian men. They're gold diggers looking for money. Never go out with Chinese men. They always go out to Chinese restaurants and they take it to their mom and your mom has these stringent rules and she takes, runs them by you and she kicks you out. So you write down these rules in your rule book and you use these rules to make decisions. I have this quote that I try to live by every day. I tell myself, every day is a rebirth, a chance to forget the failures of yesterday and to go again. Now, you cannot, you cannot make decisions based on a rule book when it comes to a relationship situation. Number one, it's going to make you look very inauthentic. So you're not going to be authentic. You're not going to be genuine because you keep running guys through a particular model. So when you see a guy, you run him through your past experience model, you take your book, take your pen, and you start to write down, mm, tall guys, I've been with them before, they were not honest. Mm, black guys, mm -mm, Chinese guys. Mm -mm. So because of this, you start to cherry pick. You start to go down to the point we made earlier about being picky. You get it? So suddenly, even the guy's gonna sense that there's something not genuine about you. He, his, he starts to sense that you're holding back. You're holding back the emotions. Just think back, how many guys have you been with? Or how many girls have you been with? When you know that you feel like they're at the point of letting themselves go, but there's just still that holding back. Do you get it? It just could be because this person has a rule book somewhere that he runs you through some stringent rules or some stringent model and is trying to eliminate traits that she doesn't like or she thinks she doesn't like and stuff. Having a rule book is definitely guaranteed going to hold you back from finding love. It's going to hold you back from being with the man or woman of your dreams. You're going to be single for a long time because you're always going to be playing out past experiences. Now guys, what I just listed are eight reasons, yes, unconventional reasons, as I said at the start of the video, 
but you need to take them to mind. These eight points individually or collectively just might be the reason why you are still single. I want you to take this point from point one to point eight and run them through you. Now you need to tell yourself the truth. I always tell myself this, you cannot indulge self-deceit. You cannot lie to yourself, guys. You need to tell yourself the truth. Tell yourself, if you think your defenses are too high, there's always an excuse, there's always something holding you back. You get into a room and the guy comes and say, hi, oh, I like your smile, oh, your hair is nice. Can you go out with me on a dinner date tomorrow? And there's always a reason why you don't wanna do this. Oh, he's too nice, oh, he's too friendly, oh. You need to find out there's something holding you back. And the sooner you narrow down on what is holding you back, start to deal with this, the better for you. Now guys, I have to say this here, I'm not a relationship expert, I'm just talking from experience, things I've gone through and how I was able to get to where I am today with my wife in a healthy marriage and see how you can borrow from my book and see how you could get a healthy relationship going for yourself. So guys, I know this video has been helpful to you, 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 you out there. I want you to do your boy a favor, go down, smash the subscribe button. And if you like the kind of videos we drop, why don't you go beside the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so when we drop videos on Thursdays, which is our CVO Thursdays, you can catch our content as they drop. And this video and our videos are really helpful to you. And if you like the kind of content we drop, why don't you go about giving us a thumbs up. Show the YouTube algorithm that we drop content that are relevant to you or people like you around the world so they can take this video and find people like you in Australia, in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, in Canada, and show them this content so they can help their life and help them make the right decision. If you have friends who you think have been jumping from relationship to relationship, or you think you need them to find the right person to settle down, why don't you think about sharing this with your friend? And if you want to get close to Fuse and ask me questions about relationship, whatever it is you want to know about, why don't you think about following me on Instagram? On Instagram, you can slide into my DMs and ask me whatever you want. I respond to every inquiry and every comment. So guys, I always say this, it's your job to be happy. Happiness is your property. It's not my job to make you happy. It's your job to make yourself happy. So I want you to be happy today. And until the next one, it's still Fuse. Bye-bye for now.